Good evening. Good evening to all of you. I wish I could see you there, but I know you're there. Anyway, I begin by thanking Marsha for that very nice introduction. Actually, Marsha and her husband Jeff and my wife Tina and I were introduced by our parents 30-some years ago when we were young adults because they wanted us to become friends for life, which we have. So it's very nice to be here and to have an introduction that comes from Marsha. This evening is going to be an evening about stories, about writing stories and telling stories. And so sort of to put my introduction of Edgar in context, I'm going to tell you a few of my own stories. Of course, having to do with the Israel Museum, a not insignificant part of my own life. And you see in front of you an iconic image of the museum after its renewal five years ago, an image that I hope many of you are familiar with, an image that happens to have been taken at sunset on the summer solstice in June of 2011. And it's an image that is just very powerfully radiant of what the power of that setting is all about. My first story is actually about the first time that I saw the museum in April of 1996 when I was asked to go to Jerusalem for the first time to think about becoming director of the museum. I walked up the museum's Carter Promenade knowing nothing about the museum but feeling the power of that venue. And I'm showing you an image now which really gives you an understanding of the underlying foundational power of that place. This being an image on May 11th, 1965, when the museum was barely 10% of the size that it is now, being the opening day of the museum, which two months from now will be the 50th anniversary of the museum. Now, keep that number 50 in your mind for a little bit, because it's going to come up again. This next image, which is from after, it's from July 2010, just after we finished the reinvention of the museum. It was a privilege and continues to be a privilege for me in my own time to have been part of realizing the potential of this place by bringing it closer and closer to what we think the original vision of the place was. Here you're seeing the outside of it, and what you see is the way in which it feels as it did in 1965, and yet 45 years later is something we hope greater and stronger, but it's not about what's outside, it's about what's inside this place. Those of you who've been there know that what's special about the museum is that on the one hand, it is very deeply rooted in its own local historical culture. At the same time, it's about putting that culture in a universal context and looking at it against the neutral modernist backdrop of what you see here. In a way, what we've done at the museum is counter trend to what museums do elsewhere in the world. You know that we reinvented our entire place for a pretty modest sum, which was only $100 million. I think many of you who've been there know that without changing the scale of the museum, we doubled the galleries on the inside, and while doubling the space, we reduced the number of objects inside so that our story could be about showing the most beautiful and the most meaningful things, not showing simply the greatest number of things that we could fit inside our buildings. Mainly what the museum has come to be about is telling a narrative, telling stories. And you can think of that as one long story, or you can think of that as a series of short stories which brings us closer to our evening together with Edgar. Today, as Marcia mentioned, we have almost a million visitors a year at the museum. That's not a big number if you think in terms of demographics here, but many of you know Israel, and you know that our demographics are markedly different. You know that we only have 700,000 people in Jerusalem, only 8 million people in all of Israel. Our tourist traffic in good years is two and a half to three million tourists, so a million visitors is not a small number. We've had landmark shows in the last few years that the world has paid great attention to, not least among them the first exhibition to look at Hasidic cultures of the world, and the first exhibition to look at King Herod and the legacy of King Herod in the region. 
Interestingly, at the present moment, and we couldn't in a way be in a more complex moment in terms of Israel's relationship with much of the rest of the world, but at this very moment and within the last several months, we have inaugurated nine showings of seven museum exhibitions in five countries on three continents around the globe. It's pretty remarkable to have us spread so broadly across the landscape given the climate in which we live. This next image brings you back to that number 50. It is indeed our 50th anniversary. I'm going to explain this logo for the year just because it gives you a sense of the way that we think about everything that we do. On the left, you see the logo of the museum that those of you who know and love us uh, know to be our logo designed by Willem Zahnberg, the first director of the museum in 1965. The 50 on the right is a very contemporary uh, typography joined together with our logo. The confetti behind is two things. Um, our logo was actually just the logo and the 50. My wife, Tina, who has the best design eye that I know, said it doesn't look very celebratory. It needs something celebratory. I happen to have cufflinks that were designed by George Jensen in 1965. Tina said, take the confetti from your cufflinks and make this celebratory. So that's what you see here, up there. And what you see there also is the reference to 50 years ago, to 1965, and when you come to the museum during this year, the year is actually all about 1965, what Israel looked like in 1965, what its aesthetic vocabulary was, and how that relates to that vocabulary today, and how if you go back 50 years from 1965, you understand the edgy avant-garde that was percolating in Europe before World War II and that came to Palestine before and during and after World War II and really became the foundational language, not just for Israel in its early years, but for the museum itself. <laughs> 